Yeah, so good morning, student, and welcome to today's class. So, my course is MA415 Algebra, and this is a lecture number uh, 15, I guess, or 16. I think 15. This is lecture number 15. Okay, so no, I think 16, right? Uh, one, two, three. Lecture number 16. Okay, so um, uh, so. Yeah, you recall in last lecture we discussed about uh, P groups. Now we have we want to generalize this idea, and uh, so today we will learn something called the nilpotent group. So before that, let us discuss some basic idea. So let me start with the group. So let G be a group, okay, uh, and then we define. So consider. So we define a few subgroups, say for example, Z0 of G is the identity subgroup. Then I define that Z1 of G is nothing but the center of the group G. Okay, by that, and then uh, I will define Z2. Like how do I define Z2? So let me write down that thing. So uh, so G mod center with the center is always in all subgroups so you can talk about G mod center so this is a uh, this is a question group right so you can talk about the center of this right now center of this question group this is a subgroup of the group G mod Z right right and you can you know that fourth arithmetic theorem or whatever we call the uh, uh, now again, again by uh, correspondence lemma. Okay, Corres correspondence theorem. So that tells that um, any subgroup of this Gaussian group can be written as uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between subgroup of Gaussian group and subgroup of original group containing the uh, this portion portion right so so uh, you have some something right so that i am writing z2 z2 of g mod uh, z g z g is nothing but z1 g so i let me write down z1 here z1 g this will be this is my yeah so this is my center center of g mod Z1 G right so the center is a group of the Gaussian group so that's why I can find out another group so so this Z2 of G is a, again a subgroup of uh, G containing containing Z1 of G right so this is corresponding theorem gives us right so so you understood so i have another group that contains the center so this you can say the second center or something like that similarly i can define for any a i can define zn right so in general i can define uh, say zi so what is so uh, for any say i uh, this greater than one you define this zi how do I find Zi of G mod Zi G is actually for, uh, is nothing but the center of the group uh, G mod Zi G. Okay, so uh, so um, yeah. Yeah, so I think this person is okay to everyone. So, um, 
yeah so so, so this is also normal subgroup uh, because this is a center right so this is always normal subgroup so so we can talk about uh, this right, right so what we will get so you will get kind of a series containing one which is nothing but z0 of g and then this is uh, containing the center which is z1 g and that's again containing the second center and dot 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 right so this type of series is called the upper sensor so this so uh, this is called the upper central series upper central series of g so what do you mean by upper upper means that this is the ascending chain of subgroups see all the subgroups are normal to g and you can also prove that their characteristics actually in fact okay so, but i only need the normality property because all those things are such things that they are not they are the center of this question group so they are normal obviously okay so uh, uh, so uh, uh, so the question is that whether this kind of um, does this kind of series ends with g or not can you find out some in whether it becomes g or not okay and then we define so now definition what is your definition that uh, we say uh, a group g is called a nilpotent group is called an nilpotent group if what happen if uh, you, you can have uh, for some n z n g is equal to g okay for some um, this n greater than equal to 1 okay clear so what does that mean that means i'm saying that uh, this this ascending chain will end to the group g itself then it is called a nilpotent group okay and um, uh, the smallest such the least uh, such in for which n it is equal see once z n g equal to g then z n plus g is equal to also g z n plus uh, plus 1 z n uh, j n plus 2 z n plus 3 all are g right so the least such integer n is called the uh, nilpotent class or nilpotent class whatever so nilpotent class of g okay a class uh, so we so we say that so uh, sub for example if n equal to 2 we will say that g is of nilpotent uh, g is nilpotent of class 2 or g has nilpotent class 2 okay a uh, nilpotence also maybe nilpotence class okay so nilpotence c okay so 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 this is the definition so start with the identity and then go to the center then the double center and the like second center third center and if this process stops with g then then we call it a nilpotent group right now uh, let us give some example uh, The most trivial examples are abelian groups. Ah. Abelian groups. See, abelian groups are always important. Why? Because if uh, G B G, if G is a is, is an abelian group. Abelian group. Then what happened? Then the center uh, is nothing but the full group G, right? So here, here, uh, here, uh, your n equal to one. Clear. 
so it stops in the first uh, term. Okay. So so and then then you have this uh, upper central series. Okay. So so abelian groups are nilpotent groups. So every abelian group is nilpotent. of class 1 okay of class 1 uh, so so the question is that do we have such group which is not mean potent okay the answer is yes so we have we have such groups so now example 2 now suppose if my group is say s3 okay so you know what is the symmetry group on three symbols S3. Now for S3, you see that if you try to find out what is the center of uh, S3, so what is the center of S3? So this is nothing but the trivial identity only, right? So what does that mean? That means you start with identity and then you go to the center and go to the second center. Okay, so all are identity. Okay, so what does that mean? That means there does not exist any n, does not exist any n such that Jn of G is G, right? So, so what does that mean? That means S3 is not nilpotent. Okay, because the center is always identity, so you cannot reach to the whole group G by this process. Clear? Ah, okay. Now um, we already learned a very important class of groups called uh, P groups in last lectures. Now we'll see that the P groups are always nilpotent group, right? And we also know what is the class. So let me prove a theorem now. Maybe three example. So uh, so let P B A P group of say order something say P power whatever you choose P power A then P is nilpotent nilpotent of class at most a minus one okay so 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 uh, it's nilpotent and the class of nilpotency cannot be more than a minus one okay at most now uh, so how to prove this kind of uh, statement so uh, uh, it's a p b a p group so all the subgroups are also p group right because uh, subgroups have order dividing p power a and they have also p group, right? So how do group? So group. Uh, so you, if you choose, uh, for example, you start with zp. So you know that zp is non-trivial, center of a p group, right? This is non-trivial. Okay. So, uh, so you can question out by P to ZP, but again P mod ZP is also, is also a P group, right? So what does that mean? That means the center of P mod ZP, right? Also non-trivial, so, 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 if P mod ZP is non trivial, then the center is then center of P mod ZP. It's also non trivial, right? This is P group. We only proved this thing in last lecture. Okay. So, what does that mean? That means um, uh, the center is very important. Center is not identity, center is always increasing, right? And so I can write down then uh, so Z2P mod 
center theta 1 p so this is nothing but center of p mod theta 1 p right and this is i know that uh, uh, this cardinal is bigger than 1 so what does that mean that means the cardinal identity of z 2 p is is um, bigger than uh, bigger than what bigger than and also see see not only bigger than one so this is p group right so what does that mean that means it must be at least p so i should say bigger than equal to p this is equal to p right because uh, this is a group of a p group and only possibilities are the power of p okay so, so what does that mean? That means this the center of this thing is actually bigger than p times z1 of p, right? Okay. And z1 of p is also at least p. So this is bigger than equal to p square. Right? Bigger than equal to p square. Similarly, if you want to find out what happened for in general, for example, um, for for the ith case, so what is z a of p? Uh, the 8th center. What is A is that order? A is this, this order, right? So what is this? So, so uh, obviously this is this mod J A minus 1 of P will be the center of G mod z a this is a minus one a minus one of p right and you know that this is also bigger than p this is order so the order of z a of p is greater than equal to p times the order of z a minus one right now you can use kind of mathematical inductions that uh, i already proved that right from here so so that gives you this is bigger than p power a because this is bigger than p times j a minus 2 and so on so the order of this a eighth center is greater than p power a but what is p power a p power a is nothing but the order of the full group right so what does that mean thus um, the order of this is equal to order of g so um, this this has to be equal to g, right? So what does that mean? That means you, this process will terminate at g, and hence g say so. So thus, thus g is a nilpotent group of class at most. So at most um, a. See why I'm saying at most. I'm saying because I don't know whether uh, there might a may not be is the smallest integer, right? So I have to find out the smallest integer, right? So it is at most a. I know that. Now I am claiming that it cannot be. A, it has to be less than a. So so claim claim uh, that. The, the class of G is uh, less than equal to a minus one. Strictly less than equal to a minus one. Okay. Now, so how do we prove this kind of statement? So, uh, on the contrary, so on the contrary, if class of G is A, then what happened? Class of G is A means what? So that means for each the center is actually uh, succeed by the previous one by P, right? So then what happened? Then you will have exactly uh, order of, there is no other option, right? Or, or sorry, order of, yeah. Um, Z I of P. Okay, so class of so uh, okay, so so here G is P nothing but okay, so I should so yeah, I should say that P equal to G that is it. Yes, so, so 
this is this is P. Okay, this is the P P group, right? I have started with P group. Yes, P B is a P group. So D equal to P. Okay, so uh, so then what happened? Then for each such it has to be this P power I I power. Then only it is possible, right? In each such P equal P power, that means what? That means, there, I mean, before A position, you cannot reach to P power A, right? If you reach before A position, then A is not the least positive integer, right? So, this is equal to this, but then, they, then you have a contradiction. Then what is the contradiction? The contradiction is that, you see that Z of A minus 2 of G, this P power A minus 2 in that case, right? So G mod this E minus 2 at center. Ah. See G equal to P for my case, so don't confuse. So this 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 is what? This is uh, this is this order will be equal to order of G mod order of second cent A minus 2 center, right? So this will be of p, p power a by p power a minus 2 which is nothing but p square. So order of this will be p square. So what does that mean? That means g mod z a minus 2 of g is abelian. Okay. Because every group order of p square is abelian. So the moment you have a abelian group then you know, the, you know that the center is always the full thing right center of g mod a minus 2 of g is nothing but the same g mod a minus 2 of g right but center is what center is nothing but g a minus 1 of g mod g a minus 2 of g right by definition so if this is the full thing so what does that mean? That this implies that the a minus one in center of g is nothing but g. But this is a contradiction. <laughs> it's a contradiction as um, as this order of a minus one. What I assume that this order is p power a minus one is not equal to p power a, which is order of a, right? So so as this so we get a contradiction contradiction what is the contradiction the contradiction is the fact that i assume i want to contrary i assume that a class is of order a so this is the contradiction so what does that mean that means uh, class class of uh, this p group g whatever is at most uh, at most uh, uh, a minus one. Okay, at most a minus one. It cannot be. Even. Okay, so we can have some example also. Uh, for example, uh, so again, you start with say g equal to say uh, d eight, the dihedral group. Okay, and then you check that the center of g is nothing but uh, having two elements, right? So you can write down that. Uh, rotation and reflection okay so one and then uh, this okay and then uh, r r square r cube is r is r square is r cube so these are the elements right one two three four five six seven eight yes and then you know the relation between s and r right so in this case if this is the uh, title group then you can easily show that this is the center is of this form more and r so this element okay clear and if you go more below center g more the center then what happens then uh, this has order order of this equal to 4 so this is then g mod zg is abelian 
right so the, what does that mean that this is already say g mod j this already will put it we already prove it available in the channel for rule right and hence um, hmm, uh, center of g mod j this is always full thing so this ends here right so what does that mean that mean uh, you have a upper central series which is nothing but this center to add two things and then this is full group g so this is the upper central this is the upper central series uh, this is the upper central series uh, for diagonal group d8 okay clear so uh, you already uh, get that diagonal group d8 is a nilpotent group of class 2 then in this case right okay similarly you can also prove the quaternion group is also the same thing okay yeah so now uh, we will give some calculation theorems uh, which tells you that how to find out that finite uh, nilpotent groups but before that uh, let me also tell you one more thing that um, uh, so this remark Uh, if G is a nilpotent group, group, then so is uh, any subgroup of G and quotient group of G. Group of G. What does that mean? That means that every subgroup of an important group is important and every person group of an important group is important. So, so um, and uh, this exercise, so do it, the homework. Okay, the simple exercise, uh, just use definition, you will find out. Okay. Okay, so uh, so uh, with this observation, uh, we would like to go forward to the characterization of finite nilpotent group. Okay, so so this is a very big theorem, and this theorem is very important uh, for practical purposes. Also. Okay, so let uh, G be a Finite group with that order of the group, say, suppose this is n, which is nothing but e1 power, say, alpha 1, some pk power, whatever, uh, yeah, pk power alpha k. Okay, this is given to you and so this p1, p2, pk's are the prime dividing order of g, right? And this is the whole power, right? And um, and right. So yeah, you choose that pi is the p silo subgroup. I is pi silo subgroup. So silo pi of g. Okay. So that is always possible. Silo system tells you that if for any such prime uh, factorization p cell subgroup always exists right so uh, these pi's are p cell subgroups i assume that uh, then uh, the following are equivalent the following are equivalent okay what are the equivalent statements? So, uh, so you, you, I am saying that there are many equivalent statements of this. So, one, G is uh, nilpotent. I mean, uh, the upper central series terminate to G, and uh, then two is what? So, every every proper 
sub group of G, every power sub group of G is a proper sub group of uh, the normalizer of that. Okay, proper sub group of its normalizer. Normal, normalizer in G. Okay, so as uh, you remember this property, you already proved for nilpotent group uh, uh, for uh, uh, P group. So, similar properties to also do for nilpotent group. That is, uh, if, if you have a subgroup H, which is proper subgroup to G, then uh, H is proper subgroup to the normalizer of. Agency. Okay, the proper, not equal to. Okay, clear. Uh, this is number two. Uh, then number three is uh, number three. You can write down that uh, these P series of groups, all the P series of groups, they are normal to G for all i equal to uh, so one, two, two. How many such things are the k many? Right? Yes. That is what. That is every Every silo subgroup, like CPI silo, subgroup of G is normal. Is normal in G. Okay. Okay, so uh, so whatever pistol subgroup you will get, it, it has to be normal subgroup. Okay, so this is a very strong statement. Now another statement, uh, this is very interesting. You can write down G as a external direct product of this pistol subgroup. Uh, PK. Okay. <coughs> yes, and then you have. Uh, see there are many, so let me just uh, conclude this thing that for every D divides the order of group G has a normal subgroup of order uh, D. Okay. Whenever you have a, a integer D divides the order of the group G, then G must have a subgroup of that order. Not only subgroup, non subgroup. Yeah, it's more than that. So what does that mean? That means uh, it's kind of this is the converse of uh, uh, so so this is the converse converse of Lagrange's theorem. Right? Converse of Lagrange's theorem true for Nilpotent group strongly, like it's normal. Not only you have a subgroup of that error, you have a subgroup of a uh, non subgroup of that error. Okay? Okay, so uh, uh, So how do we prove this now? Uh, one in plus two, two in plus three. So the proofs are uh, okay. The proofs. So uh, one in plus two. So one tells that what is given. G is uh, G is is a nilpotent group, and I need to show that uh, the proper subgroup of each are uh, they are actually proper inside the normalizer, right? Now proof is similar. Uh, what we prove uh, to uh, that the P groups, remember in P groups we assume that uh, we prove that every proper subgroup of a P group can properly contain inside the normalizer, right? Similar proof we can do it. So, so, uh, so, um, so uh, we will. By induction, right? Induction on the order of the group. 
right so if uh, uh, this order of the group is 1 so this is trivial there is nothing to prove and uh, now I assume that that order of group is greater than 1 and the statement statement is true is true for any uh, group of order less than order of the group J okay so this is the induction hypothesis and now we need to as uh, start with the uh, uh, subgroup proper subgroup so now now let we have a power subgroup of G, right? And we always know that uh, uh, this normalizer, uh, this normalizer of, uh, or rather I should say that, yeah. So what I need, to, I need to check, so I need to find out these, right? So these always contain the center. Because center normalizes H always, right? So what does that mean? That means if you start a subgroup H, and the center of the group G and you see that this is always inside the normalizer of H because H normalizes H and center normalizes H so this is, and H is sitting inside this right clear so um, so so this is this is if H is H is a proper subgroup of a, uh, a proper subgroup of G, not full thing, then um, two things can happen. Either center is inside H, uh, sorry, if, if H is inside G, then you are done, right? Um, then it's obvious, right? If H is not inside G, then this is a subgroup which is in between, right? Okay, and the last case, what? Last case is that um, center, uh, so in this case, it's done also. Now, last case, if the center of the group G is sitting inside H. If in this case, what happens? If center is sitting inside H, then then you can go more below that. Then you, you just write down G, G, G bar equal to G mod the center. Okay. Is also uh, nil potent, right? Because I given exercise homework that Question group of an important group is always important. In fact, uh, the moment, um, yeah, so yeah, we prove it. This is very simple. If you have mm -hmm. a upper central series for G, like uh, uh, G0, G1, G2, G3, uh, Gn, and then if you go more to that G, then what happens? Then it will start from. Uh, your G, G1 actually becomes G0 in that case and G2 will become G1 like that, right? The simple this is. Okay, so uh, so this is uh, G, G, G bar is also nil potent and uh, what does that mean? That means you have a nil potent group and, um, uh, and the order of uh, G bar is less than order of G and so by induction hypothesis, induction hypothesis, what happened? The H bar, H bar is what? H bar equal to H mod is the center. Okay, so H bar is, is properly contained in the center, right? Uh, the normalizer properly contained in the normalizer of H bar in G bar right the same thing what we proved and now you just use the lattice isomorphism theorem that gives you that um, this is normalizer is a subgroup of that G mod so 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 yeah obviously so okay so so this this is probably going to be in this 
and hence age is probably continuous. This, uh, this is obvious now. Okay, this is a proof already proof for nilpotent group. Uh, nil uh, p group is also similar proof is also true for nilpotent group here, right? Okay, so so this is uh, one implies two that uh, nilpotent groups implies that uh, centralizer. So what does that mean? The normalizer actually grows. Normalizers are bigger than the power subgroups. Okay, and now uh, if you have to prove that. 2 implies 3. So, what does that mean? 2 implies 3. 2 implies 3 tells me that. Um, uh, so, it is given that every proper subgroup, every proper subgroup has actually inside properly inside the normal, right? Now I need to prove that uh, that every psi the subgroups is normal. Okay. So, so let me start with so let uh, so uh, just p is one psi the subgroup something p i four. Yeah, so you write down uh, for some i, so i is uh, 1 to k, whatever, right? So you know that there are k many pcl subgroups. So for any such p, then what happened? You write down uh, this and the normalizer. So this is my normalizer of that p inside g. So I choose these two groups. One is a pcl subgroup, another is the normalizer of that, right? Now, um, uh, by definition, P is always normal inside normalizer of uh, P inside P, right? This is always true. Okay. And uh, so, so this, this, and uh, so P is a, uh, this P silo subgroup, um, subgroup of subgroup of n right p is a pcl subgroup of n right so if p is a pcl subgroup of n which is normal uh, then what does that mean then every pcl subgroup uh, normal subgroup what does that mean that means this pcl subgroup is also unique right if it is normal then it is unique and also is characteristic then this is already proof right then p is the characteristic subgroup of the normal subgroup n that is right okay now now again we what do you know again uh, again you see that n is sitting inside normalizer of n in g right n is also subgroup of g right so we can talk about the normalizer of n right and n is sitting inside the normalizer of n in g that, that is obvious and not only that n is also normal inside that right so so we have p which is characteristic in n and n is normal in this so what does that mean that means p is normal in normalizer of n in g right characteristic subgroup of normal subgroup is normal this is uh, this is already we have done right in tutorial tutorial C tutorial. Okay, so P is normal inside this normalizer of n equal to G. But bingo, what does that mean? So this implies the normalizer of this is a subgroup of n. Remember n, what was n? n is the normalizer of P in G. So what does that mean? That is the biggest subgroup of G inside which P can be normal. But I choose, I find out another subgroup where P is normal. So that means this is equal to this. But other part is also obvious by definition. Uh, where is that? Uh, yeah. Uh, where is the other part? Yes. P is. Uh, yeah. So this. this no. N is, N is normal. Did I write down here? Okay. No. So, so, so. Uh, yeah. So this is. Right, n is sitting inside normalizer of n in g, but here I prove that normalizer of n in g is also sitting inside n. So what does that mean? That means n is nothing but normalizer of n in g. Okay, uh, sorry, normalizer, normalizer of n in g. Okay, so what does that mean? If n is normalizer of n in g, that means that uh, so so if you if you take normalizer of n, that has to be g, but 
uh, what do we uh, assume in number two? Number two, we assume that every proper subgroup is sitting inside the normalizer, right? But but that means uh, n cannot be a proper subgroup of G, right? Because n, if n is a proper subgroup of G, then n cannot be equal to the normalizer of n in G, right? But here we prove that n is normalizer of n in G. Thus, n equal to G. It's not proper. It has to be full thing. Now, if n equal to G, then what does that mean? That means normalizer of P in G equal to G. And hence, P is normal to G, right? This is a nice, so nice magical proof. So, we just prove that so this is true for every p, right? p i is, is normal to g for all i in between that 1 to p. So in Hilbert group, what happened? In Hilbert group, all the normal, all the silo subgroups are all normal subgroups. Okay. Then now uh, 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 3 implies 4. Now in 3 plus 4, what do I need to prove? I need to prove that G is a, so if, if, if it is given that P i is a normal subgroup of G, then G has to be equal to the direct product of uh, this, uh, all those things, right? So what I need to prove that? I need to prove that, so we need to prove, we need to prove that, um, that this this internal direct product p1 p2 and dot dot say um, pi it is isomorphic to the external direct product p1 I, I mean we will prove this p2 dot, dot pi for all i in between this whatever i i choose up to k then this is true so the, in particular when i equal to k the left hand side will be g, right hand side will be the reject product of that p silo subgroup, right? Now, how do you prove this kind of statement? So, uh, obviously, for i equal to 2, this is uh, obvious. So, let, let's show you. So, uh, for i equal to 2, you, what do you have? We have p1 and p2, right? So, I need to prove that p1 and p2 direct product of p1 cross product. Now, 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 you remember uh, how to prove something direct product of uh, external direct product of that thing we prove that the intersections is uh, okay so intersections of uh, they are normal uh, so okay so so for this is we need to prove right now how, how to prove this so to prove this thing uh, as uh, it is p1 and p2 uh, both are normal that is from 3. From 3 we get that P and P2 both are normal, right? And hence uh, uh, the first part of the proof we need to, what we need to check that the like product is equal to external product is true. Um, this is and number 2 what was the intersection, right? So P1 intersection P2. But P1 intersection P2 is also uh, trivial. Why is it trivial? Because uh, See, P1 has power, that Pi power, P1 power alpha, right? So every element will be having order, some dividing P1 to some power of P1. But for P2, the order will be dividing some power of P2, right? So the only possibility is the identity is that belongs to both, in both cases, right? So this implies that uh, the P1, P2 is actually uh, direct product of P1 plus P2, right? Yeah. So now, uh, for example, if you want to use just uh, interesting hypothesis, then you assume that uh, uh, now you start with say age, which is um, P1 and then P2 and then P i minus 1 and uh, so let age equal to this then by induction hypothesis 
hypothesis what happened your age will be and direct product of p1 cross p2 cross pi minus 1 right now we need to check for uh, the, the uh, this term whether h cross pi or oh, sorry rather yeah uh, i should say this h into pi should be equal to this or not p1 p2 pi minus 1 cross pi this is we need to check now how to check these two things now to check these two things i need to first check that whether both are uh, normal approved or not and second thing is that um, uh, so, uh, so second thing is that uh, they, they, they have empty intersection or not but you see that the order of age is what order of age is that order of p1 dot 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 order of that pi minus 1 and these are all distinct prime right and order of pi is also this uh, some pi power alpha right so they, they are distinct prime so they are in the, in the, the intersection has to be always trivial okay so as these pi's are distinct prime age intersection pi is always in this trivial means the identity is only limit right and also uh, this each pi is normal so the intersection product will be normal and also h is normal to g and also uh, pi is also normal to g so h intersection pi is nothing but uh, h direct product of pi right and hence what you prove you just prove that p1 p2 pi is nothing but p1 direct product p2 direct product pi right and this is for all i in between 1 to k right so in particular when when um, i equal to k then what happened then then uh, left hand side g will be equal to this p1 p2 pk and this is nothing but is not equal to p1 direct product p2 direct product pk it's okay fine okay now uh, that um, uh, 4 implies 5 uh, that is uh, obvious because if d divides that order p1 plus alpha 1 pk power alpha k that means d will be of the form uh, p1 power say a1 pk power a k right where these a i's are less than equal to alpha i's for all i for all i equal to 1 to k this is the condition right a i is at this so a i can be max, may, zero also so can be zero also of this well, but in any case uh, this a whenever a p p i a i divides p1 for alpha 1 but this is a p group right so uh, so note that note that the PIs are P groups of order PI power alpha, right? And so, so, so uh, uh, PIs contains contains uh, say subgroups of order not only subgroups so this normal subgroup actually normal subgroup order uh, pi power ai right for all i equal to 1 to the good k so what does that mean that means if you have uh, 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 divide the d which having this p p1 by 1 factor so you will have h1 is a normal subgroup of p1 and then h2 is a normal subgroup of p2 and so on 
hk is in our subgroup of pk and the order of each i's are order of each i's are pi power ai right what does that mean that means if you write down h which is nothing but this direct product of uh, we, we know that uh, this is direct product so we write down h equal direct product of h1 is to hk so this is a uh, subgroup of not only sub is not subgroup because each of hi is p1 inside this inside pk right but uh, in 4 you know that this is product is nothing but h uh, g full group g so thus h is a non subgroup of g of order d whatever order you gave i find out non subgroup of the same order okay so uh, so uh, so that uh, lagrange's theorem has a converse here and that is strongly true okay and thus the finally i need to check um, uh, that 5 implies 1 5 implies 1 means what that is given that every for every divisor d you have non subgroup of order that thing, right so it's a given a group g and you know that a equal to P1 power alpha 1 dot dot PK power alpha K. So, so, so by 5, um, G has a normal subgroup of order uh, this PI per alpha for every I. For every i have no subgroup of this p i per alpha i. but what is this non subgroup they are nothing but the p pseudo subgroup right they are pseudo subgroup the highest order subgroup right so 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 um, so they they are the normal uh, Okay, so I should say like this. So let me write down say like this. This subgroups are uh, silo subgroups, right? The highest order subgroup. See, subgroups of p of g and thus every uh, every uh, yeah so uh, so i i may um, prove that 5 plus 3 actually and then this you can easily find out the 3 plus 1 also okay so then i will stop here so every uh, uh, silo subgroup silo subgroup of g is normal thus thus g is nil potent okay so uh, uh, yeah, so I need to, uh, so I'm assuming that uh, you need to show that if every subgroup of G is normal, then G is nilpotent. You know how to prove it, okay? And then uh, it's, it's the case, okay? Or I can I can uh, prove uh, 3 plus 4, 4 implies 1 also. So there are many ways to prove this, okay? So this 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 uh, ends today's class. Maybe see there are many more things left. Maybe we will talk in the next lectures. Okay, so let us stop here.